Good morning. How's everybody doing? So you guys get the pleasure of listening to my entire thesis this morning. So get ready for 40 minutes of catfish. <laughs> so uh, my paper today that I'm presenting is uh, the influence of chase boat use on samples of blue catfish. And what I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit is how we use chase boats for sampling blue catfish, uh, compare efficiency between 5 and 10 minute samples, and then compare size structures that you get from a chase boat and electrofisher and from a 5 and a 10 minute sample. So <clears throat> when we use chase boats uh, for sampling blue catfish, we tend to see, think that they pick up distant fish, um, that they catch bigger fish, um, and they're widely used as part of standardized protocols uh, throughout the southeast. Um, but, you know, for uh, flathead catfish, there's been some literature that suggests that they may not be necessary. A single electrofisher can be more efficient when calculated for additional effort, and they can produce uh, equivalent size distributions. So, for our study, what we're going to look at is, does a chase boat affect size distribution and capture efficiency of blue catfish? And then how does sample duration affect size distribution and capture efficiency? So we conducted this study on the Arkansas River, uh, specifically Lake Dardanelle. It's a 35,000 acre reservoir uh, on Pool 10. Um, it consists of a river zone. It can break, you can break it down geomorphologically into a river zone, a uh, transition zone, and a lacustrine zone. And we focus specifically on the river zone and the lake zone because they're so geomorphologically different. Um, we conducted four trials uh, over a two-year period, uh, randomly selecting a, a starting point from the bottom end of each section. So we broke each section down into four equivalent uh, parts, selected a random starting spot, and then we selected the most abundant habitats from that point. So in the lake zone, these were main channel, channel edge, and adjacent flat habitats. And in the <coughs> river zone, these were uh, main navigation channel, river bank, and uh, wing dike type habitats. And we standardized our electrofishing settings at 200 volts, uh, 30 peak amps with a 6,000 watt output at 15 pulses per second. And we were using a Midwest Infinity box. So this is our boat configuration that we have. So you can see we had two live wells on each boat. Um, the live well on the left was for our five minutes. So after five minutes was up, I'd wave my hands, hey, blow a whistle, wave a flag, like, hey, we need to switch move over to the second level. We did that for both boats. <clears throat> um, the chase boat was never allowed to come within like a certain distance of electrofisher, so it wouldn't like impact the sampling of the electrofisher. And um, uh, each fish was measured to total length. So we compared um, the electrofisher with the chase boat, which we will now call uh, Chase Plus. It's the combined electrofisher and chase boat combined. Um, they gave us paired samples, uh, made sure that uh, electrofishing effort was the same as when we were sampling with the chase boat for both five and ten minute samples. Um, we removed samples of no fish or fish that did not consist of the sizes that we were interested in. And we compared length frequency distributions uh, and from captures for all fish, uh, fish greater than 199 millimeters, greater than 299 millimeters, and 599, 509 millimeters. And we tested that with a Kamolgrov Smirnoff test. Um, we compared, we described relationships between uh, capture efficiency, five and 10 minute samples using quantal regression. And uh, we did this because it does not make any assumptions about the distribution of the residuals. And then we also use that for a PSDQ to compare uh, of samples that contain at least uh, 50 stock fish uh, as dictated by Miranda 2007. And so we regressed five minute samples, uh, five minutes with electrofisher, uh, 10 minutes with electrofisher, and then uh, compare those to 10 minutes with electrofisher and chase boat combined. So <clears throat> for our results summary, we um, collected 96 samples from four sample periods. Uh, from May and June, we collected 24 each, and uh, two sampling periods in September for 48, and we collected 4,330 blue catfish. So for our first question is, uh, does a, a, a chase boat affect size distributions? What we saw was that uh, for all size categories of fish, we see that the lower proportion of them um, are captured with uh, the addition of a chase boat. But when you look at bigger size sizes, so 199 millimeters, 299 millimeters, and 509 millimeters, 
we really didn't see much of a difference between those uh, size distributions. So the chase boat really doesn't um, give you a different uh, size distribution when you're looking at your, three, your stock size and your quality size fish. Um, size distributions from sample time. You know, again, you know, we see that there were differences for our small, all fish and smaller fish, but once you get into your stock size and quality size fish, you really didn't see a, di a difference between, you know, a five and 10 minute sample um, with a, just a single electric fisher or when you had a chase boat. <coughs> so um, as far as um, number of fish captured with an electric fisher as compared to a chase boat, so we have electric fishers here on our x-axis and chase boats here on our y-axis. The way that you interpret this is if you have a slope that's equal to one, that there is no difference between the two. So anything greater than one is going to be more influenced by a chase boat for 10 minutes. Anything less than one is going to be more towards the electric fisher. And so we see here when we look at all fish sizes that we kind of have a slope that's greater than one, indicating that a chase boat is helping you catch more fish when it comes to all size classes. Um, similar story with 199, uh, your stock size, and then, but when we looked at our quality size, we see that the electric fisher was actually catching uh, more quality size fish than with the chase boat combined. Um, for the five versus 10 minute, uh, 10 minute sample, this is just looking at a single electric fisher. We again see that five minutes, you're catching more fish uh, for all size classes. Um, 199 millimeters and above, you're catching more fish in five minutes. Your, your stock size and your quality size, you're catching more fish in your first five minutes than in a whole 10 minutes. Um, looking at five minutes and 10 minutes using a chase boat, uh, we again see that five minutes here and here, you're again catching uh, more fish in five minutes than you are in a total of 10 minutes. And then lastly, looking at PSDQ, we see that uh, the use of a chase of a single electric fisher in five minutes caught had higher PSD values than a chase boat in 10 minutes. Um, you know, again, so five minutes, 10 minutes, and five minutes with a chase boat, you're getting higher uh, PSD values than all the others. So. So takeaway messages from this paper was that um, incorporating chase boats results in the capture of a low proportion of fish less than 200 millimeters. Uh, chase boats increase CPE for all size classes of fish except uh, the largest, so greater than your quality size. Uh, size distributions of stock fish are similar between boat types. Uh, larger fish are collected in five minutes versus 10 minute samples regardless of boat type. Um, what this uh, effect was decreasing uh, with size, larger size fish. And then PSD Q values were similar enough to conclude any combination of boats and time are efficient. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody who helped me with this part of my study and take any questions. Okay. Yep, I flew through that. <coughs> yes, sir. So how did you I'm just trying to kind of picture how this I'm going to grab my bottle of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go while you. While no, you uh, so, so with the electric fishing board, obviously you can't really see fish come up, you know, far from the boat. Mm -hmm. Do you really leave those for the chase boat, or, or are you trying to get all you can with the electric fish? So what would happen is the fish would come up in a school. So the electric fish would, try, would move towards the school, and they would engage the school first. And then the chase boat would kind of work on the edges and collect fish that just came up around the electric fisher. So, but again, you know, this kind of shows that there's kind of a big fish bias. You know, if a big fish comes up first, the electric fisher, he's gonna kind of go over to it first, rather than just sampling the small fish, which is fine as long as you stay consistent throughout your sampling periods. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. So the catch rates after five minutes was this better fatigue or why it was lower? So I think that initially you have the biggest, the most amount of fish come up within. So what we would see the trend is that, you know, you turn on the power, about a minute would go by, and then all the fish would come up at once. And they would stay there for about 
three, four minutes sometimes, and then they would start to go down. And then, and then once that happened, the electric fisher would kind of move along the habitat type. And if they engaged another school, then their catch rates would go up. But oftentimes, they wouldn't engage another school. So I think that, so all those fish are coming up within that first five minutes. And that's why you see such uh, higher catch rates. Yes, sir. Well, I should have paid more attention to this when the slides were up. No, no, no. One right in front of me here. But what's your range of catch per unit efforts, uh, number per hour? Because I imagine that influences a lot on how many chase boats are needed. If you're, mm -hmm. you know, I, you hear Greenlee talk about the Chesapeake mm -hmm. and the six thousand an hour. You got yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, so he, but he used, I think he used like, he, I've actually sampled with Bob, and he uses, like, <laughs> he uses like three or four chase boats. Yeah, right. it's, it's bedlam. It's like boats everywhere. Yeah, you're everywhere. walking across. Boats <laughs> There's so many fish. Uh, they range, you know, obviously, it, you know, our standard air was super high because sure. of it. So anywhere from zero to a thousand fish per hour. Okay, so you pretty yeah. much have the gamut of possibilities there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that you, we, you know, there were some times when we'd have complete and total gear saturation. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Marlon. Yeah, thanks, guys. I get to give the next talk too. So.